Okay, it's uh, 10 o'clock. Um, thanks everyone for joining. This is uh, John Conway. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Automation Sales Manager for Rexel Western New York. And as some of you have, I know from business, but also have attended some of our tech talks, this is part of a series that we're doing weekly now on Tuesdays at 10. And uh, we're very interested in your feedback. And we also are part of being digitally connected to you. If there's subject matters that you want us to put on or have interest in, uh, we will do that normally, as in this case, um, we let our specialists have been picking the material. And today's subject is cybersecurity. And some of you might be very interested in that in today's world, uh, specifically to SIP security, uh, which is the common industrial protocol. And a lot of that has been uh, real recent with our friends at Rockwell in industrial control systems and in networking engineering. We're fortunate to have Will Hobbs as our uh, network engineer who handles our industrial networks. Will has been with us uh, three, four years now, I think. And on top of that, he's got Cisco certification. He's Stratus startup certified, Stratus servers, and he's actually Panduit uh, certified as two. So few house cleaning or house uh, keeping uh, things I need for today. Let you know that this is being recorded uh, today. Uh, if you want to share that, I know other people who can't make it, uh, we can make it available to them. Uh, Will will uh, provide the presentation if people do want that as well. Just contact him. But I ask that you mute yourself because um, uh, we're really hoping to get through this in about 40, 45 minutes. And uh, if you have any questions on any of the matters or subjects during it, you're welcome to put it in the chat. I will be checking the chat. We will go over the chat area at the end and uh, Will and I will address any questions. We will also open it up at the end so that you do want to ask anything verbally, uh, you can. And with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hobbs. Well, you're on mute. Will, you're on mute. Sorry, I couldn't get back to the um, the main meeting screen. Okay. <laughs> I went over to the chat to see if I could have the chat up at the same time, but I couldn't. Hi guys, good morning. Um, go over SIP security today. We'll cover the SIP security protocol, defense in depth security model by Rockwell and how, how you can use it on your plant floor to secure your communications in, in several layers. So our agenda is why do we care about SIP security? What are we going to do about it? How are we going to go about it? Using a phased approach to rolling it out, and then we'll save time at the end for any questions. The This uh, snapshot is uh, all the cyber incidents by a sector, and one of the main uh, targets has been critical manufacturing with most of the hits. Uh, with some energy and water uh, breaches as well, um, hackers are, are learning a lot more that if you hit the plant floor and stop production, you're going to uh, get more attention and people are more apt to pay the ransom if it's ransomware or um, they get a lot more attention and they like to, I think they just like to be able to take down facilities and stuff kind of like against the man. The cost of security, uh, the cyber incidents are in, um, in this case, this Germany breach, uh, it was 6 million per day in, uh, in losses. It was, you know, not only revenue is lost, but uh, brand damage. And then you've also got compliance fines for like pharmaceuticals. And then just the plain old lost productivity and it all adds up quickly. We know how important it is, uh, this focus on cybersecurity. Um, 
historically uh, the uh, network protocols lacked security and uh, allowed it, it didn't allow a device to defend itself against network communications attack. And that's still true. We, we still have a lot of older equipment out on the floor. There's a lack of authenticity of the communications, um, integrity and the confidentiality of, of the data. And uh, all the network protocols have the same, have the same inherent problems. A lot more companies are looking toward IEC 62443 um, to base their standards on and try to set the bar. And I think a lot more um, CFOs and CIOs are uh, paying attention to the standards now. So what happens when somebody gets into the network? There's a few ways that they go about it. And some of you guys in IT know all these, the direct connect, whether it be a disgruntled person or somebody that just wants to monkey around and they can walk up to a box and just connect to a hub or what have you open on the floor. Um, more likely is a man in the middle attack, uh, receive um, intercepting communications and either monitoring the data or manipulating the data, or for instance, in that Ukrainian hack where they were manipulating the data sent, sent to the, um, the cylinders or the whatever it was that they were doing on the drives, I think, and speeding them up just so often uh, past the um, past the, the breaking point slowly but surely. And then they would send back normal communications back to the HMIs just to deceive the people that everything was going okay. So the SIP security protocol helps provide a transport layer, a secure transport for Ethernet IP networks. Um, it enables connected devices to protect from malicious communications. So it does that by rejecting messages or rejecting data or um, helps prevent viewing of the data by uh, encrypt encryption. And this is, uh, this is all part of the defense in depth module that you may be familiar with. Uh, on the right hand side, there is the defense in depth model. And it, the idea behind it is uh, make multiple layers of security and you're going to slow down an attacker at least and got to peel back the onion to get through it. And this is not a replacement for uh, firewalls and um, good, good uh, modeling, good network modeling hardware wise. So the ODBA, uh, SIP security protocol, the Open Device Net Vendors Association, um, they, they made this protocol with the four security properties in mind. They, they, wanna, they want devices to identify themselves, they want them to authenticate, they want the data to be uh, whole and integrated, and, and they want the data to be confidential. So if we look at the four, the four different properties, um, we would use certificates just like in a, in a browser. And then authentication uh, would use um, keys and the integrity, data integrity would add hashes to the traffic going back and forth so that if there was any change in the data, it wouldn't be accepted by the controller or the HMI or whatever device it is connected. And then data confidentiality, data encryption, if, uh, if it's important to get to that. So this is, the, this is leveraging proven technology and this, our web browsers do this all the time. And you may be familiar with how this works, but I'll, I'll go over it. Um, the browser will send a hello, and then the web server responds by sending a public key to the web browser. And then the web browser checks and verifies that certificate is indeed belongs to uh, the website that it says it does through a third party um, certificate issuer. And then they uh, exchange keys so that they can secure communications. And you'll notice the, the locks in the, in the browser. So 
So uh, secure the SIP security protocol overview. Um, so we've got the four the four layers: the uh, identity and the authentication, the integrity of the data, the confidentiality, and these are these are the beginning. These are the devices that are uh, securable. So it's not a ton of stuff yet, but it's slowly rolling out more and more. So like the control logics 5580 and the Ethernet module, the 1756 have the SIP security um, ability. So the identity and the authentication helps prevent unauthorized devices from establishing communications. How does it do that? Uses certificates, the factory talk links, connecting to an EN4TR, They'll exchange certificates and they'll recognize each other as a device that should be on there. And if a hacker tries to connect, it's not going to be able to, he's not going to be able to get in because he doesn't have a certificate. Uh, un, un, unprotected uh, hacker would be able to send commands to the controller through links or man in the middle attack. So the integrity of the data, the, uh, it uses a, a hash and it's attached to every message to validate the authenticity of the data. And uh, the message is first hashed to provide integrity and then they exchange the hashes and it's like a checksum or CRC. And um, it's infeasible to generate a message from its hash one way. And the, the data wouldn't be able to be modified as well. The this, this key is added to the message before it's hashed to provide authenticity. And it's fast and efficient. And it really is only a minor performance impact for the that. As far as integrity, uh, there's, there's, they're able to, a hacker uh, wouldn't be able to modify the data, but they could still sniff it out. That's where the encryption would come in. If it were, if it were um, needed, like so, say for instance, uh, the server had recipes on it or something to that effect, then you might want to encrypt data. But this does take some resources to to do. Um, it's the encryption method is is negotiated as part of the transport layer handshake process. So um, it's much like kind of like a kind of like how wireless encrypts itself. And that the encryption would help provide the confidentiality by preventing snooping or the disclosure of the data. So what exactly are we securing with SIP security? We're, we're securing the ports and Either port, dual ports can contain different security configurations. So if you have one uh, port going up to the IT network or and one for the zone, uh, you could leave the zone untouched and you know it would be its own little circle or a little zone network. But all the, um, the traffic going upward could be checked or you could apply cert certificates to it. And, ensure that anything connecting from up down to this module is, is uh, protected. This is showing, this is showing basically the system components that you need. Uh, so we've got the authentication and the integrity and the confidentiality that we're looking at. And the, uh, the, the two major parts to it are the factory talk policy manager and the factory talk system services. And is everybody good so far? Any questions yet, John? Not yet, Will, but I think it's important um, just to make sure people understand what SIP stands for and who came up with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, the common industrial protocol. And I believe that was um, Rockwell. Consortium, right. Headed that up. And then it's part of the uh, 
ODVA, right? Which you mentioned right. is the Open Device uh, Vendors yeah. Association. Yep. Open Device Net, sorry, Vendors Association. Yeah, which is standard. Which includes IP now. I mean, they just they they've done other things, not just with device net. And that this this SIP security and with these products and components and with these uh, factory talk uh, policy manager and system services, they all run on an Ethernet IP, right? You have to have Ethernet IP for this to work. So some people might not know that, but we want to make sure you're clear and understand that this is specifically for an Ethernet IP network. Yep. Actually, that's a good point um, that kind of ties into if you were to deploy this, um, you can use trusted IP addresses. So you, you're able to retrofit this stuff, uh, use your legacy systems using trusted IPs. And uh, I know some companies that lock it down to the MAC address. And this this is a lot for for what we're covering today, but again, part of this is that we're trying to educate you and, and make you aware of what's coming. And uh, some of this is out, some of it is still being uh, worked on by Rockwell and we'll keep you updated. But if you wanna talk specifically about your network, we welcome those uh, inquiries. So just again, you can put stuff in the chat right now or wait to the end Q and A or just reach out to Will or myself and we can talk about your specifics, but it was a good stop, Will, because I, I, it is a lot of information. You went pretty quickly, and I appreciate it, but I, I think it was good to just point out to people some of these uh, acronyms. We throw them around like everybody understands what they are. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. The um, uh, Some of the notable features, the system management, I was just uh, thinking about this. Um, you can do, easily create and deploy security po policies to many devices all at once. And that kind of ties in with the, uh, with the drive that uh, PowerFlex 755T, uh, that, was, um, that, that was using, I believe some companies are using automatic ADC on configuration deployment, automatic, I forgot that acronym, automatic configuration, but you can push the configuration. So if somebody, um, the drive goes bad or, or control logic needs to be replaced or whatever. Um, as soon as it gets put back on the wire, uh, it, you can push the same, you can push the same config to it that you had on the previous one. Uh, and micro segmentation, part of this is segmenting your, your, uh, your automation applications into smaller cells and zones. I was just gonna put my own security posture survey ad in here for, uh, we're doing, uh, we've done some security posture surveys already, but uh, it's a great place to start. If you, if you don't know what's on your network, um, we can come in and analyze the traffic we capture packets from various switches that are crucial. We analyze your um, processes. We try to make a good map of your network, and then we'll um, we'll sniff, so to speak, packets coming across the wire, and then we run them against Rockwell's uh, through Rockwell, and they analyze it with threat detection software, and it comes up with a two reports, one of them is uh, huge and it contains all the data and what, what's going on over your wire. And the other, uh, the other report is smaller and it's a um, needs to be addressed immediately report of all the high, high risk items. So with the configuration, um, um, you would use the, the policy manager software and what they're using, they, they use a few concepts. They use devices, zones, and conduits. And then the uh, factory talk system services platform would be the, the handler of all the um, policies, certificates, the encryption and the deployment, et cetera.
So here, here we have a zone connected and we could see that the, uh, the traffic between the, the laptop and the, and the switch is encrypted and it's also in a trusted IP list. And the other, the other ones are, uh, they have data integrity. So they would be using the, uh, the hash, but not necessarily encrypted so that it doesn't impact performance. But they're all in a trusted IP list. So once this is a bit of a misnomer, once the um, model has been deployed, the policy manager software and the factory talk system services are no longer required, but they kind of are because if they're handling the encryption and stuff, I think that you're going to have to leave it run on a server somewhere. But uh, the policy manager, yeah, you, you would be done with that. So here we'll have a sample deployment. You got your factory talk view software at the higher level with the studio software going down to a couple of zones, the HMI and controllers. <clears throat> so they split it up into zones and they have a, a PC zone for say a factory floor people working on the code. And they have two, they created two zones and then you create conduits inside the software of trusted communications. And I, uh, I apologize, I wanted to get a um, demo for you guys, but I just didn't have, uh, I, they don't have the, um, the virtual machine created yet. I'll, I'll have to create one with the factory talk software and all. Uh, things to be aware, aware of, um, it's not high, it's, it doesn't support high availability. It doesn't do network address translation and it's, it's mapped to a public IP address. It does not support, this initial release does not support the automatic device replacement. So I, I apologize, actually I misspoke on that. So you can't use it with that. Um, and it supports only one NIC, NIC if multiple NICs are available in, a, in the length software. That would be on a, maybe a machine that had two NICs. They're, I think they're developing this fairly quickly, though. So the use case scenario, the, this is a, how, how you would get started. Uh, you could secure configuration to the controllers so that all your computers talking to controllers are secure. Uh, you would secure the inbound connection in the EN4TR module or right in the controller itself. So you would have a trusted IP list. You could have encrypted um, communications and then the hash and the certificates to prove the, the devices should be talking to each other. And then once you, uh, once you, once you move on to phase two, you can extend the model and you add more devices to the trusted IP list as, as, as you go along. And then once the, uh, hardware comes out, more hardware, um, you would remove the devices from the trusted IP list and just secure it with this using the SIP security protocol. So the release schedule, uh, this is available. The policy manager software is available now. Uh, the control logic is 5580, version 32 or later. Uh, the EN4TR communication module and the Kinetics 5700 drive. And they're looking at um, coming out with a SIP security proxy uh, for Q3. So I think this would be at the head of everything and um, would handle the traffic and the encryption and save your processors some, uh, some resources. And the uh, PowerFlex 755T drive coming out in uh, 2020. And here's some references we can give you. I'll uh, send this out to whoever wants it. You can get um, a better look at the factory talk policy manager with the getting results guide. Um, as always, 
how SubSecurity is used with con converged plant-wide Ethernet architecture. If you're not familiar with that, um, it's a good, it's a it's a monster of a document. It's about 800 pages, but it's really how uh, Rockwell teamed up with Cisco and um, came up with the best best practices for uh, deploying an industrial network. Uh, system security design guidelines from Rockwell and all about the SIPs, the application technique, the SIP security with Rockwell automation products. That's about it. I got actually through it in 25 minutes, but we didn't have a lot of questions. Does Thank anybody you. have any questions or want to go into anything deeper? I hope I didn't move too fast. So, so what zones, so is this, is this, used to control um sensor and drives or is it just plc to like management like uh yeah. supervisory kind of stuff yeah it's the latter yeah it's like a supervisory kind of thing but um, okay yeah you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't necessarily encrypt the io traffic okay yeah anything like going up past the controller got it okay like uh, yeah, so like an HMI to a PLC and PLC to a laptop. It's a yeah. Got it. And these can in there's no and and it can route, right? So yeah. I, I can have different enforcement zones. I can have an or I can have an enforcement zone between the PC and the PLC, and there's no problem with that. Correct. Yeah, there was a picture. Let me see if I did. There was a picture of the software in here. Where did that go? Oh, here, yeah. I wonder why it looks like I, a few slides were skipped. Let's see here. Huh. Let me get out of this. Can you guys see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. shoot my slides here this is the software i can't get it to play though that didn't help much there you go so here's a here's a good example of um, adding devices you can kind of see the the um See the on the left side, you got the zones, the conduits, and the devices. It's pretty, it's fairly simple it's software. So you would create your zones and you could have conduits going in between zones. Yeah. Got it. And then Thanks. here's the properties. Yeah, of the zones you can here's where you would enable the SIP security of each zone or not. So yeah, you could the policy options. You could you could have um, one zone with uh, you know certificates and pre-shared keys. The, there you go. The I/O security, message security, none. Or you could you could do the integrity. And when they say integrity, that that means the hash. And with the integrity and confidentiality, they're, the confidentiality they're adding. They're they're using that word for the encryption. And then. Uh, you know, and some of the stuff you wouldn't be able to use SIP because it's not ready for it. And you could use those devices and just put those in a zone and uh, specify an IP range so that anything that were was trying to communicate in that zone that didn't fall into that IP range wouldn't be accepted. Okay. So nobody could come in and plug in on your network and just, I don't know, upload code or anything. Yeah. Sometimes, okay. sometimes that can be, sometimes, um, a lot of times, actually, a, 
devastating problems on the factory floor come from people accidentally uploading old code or, you know, it's, how did I, I forgot how they used to put that. They used to put it like uh, good intent, accident, intentional. I forget how they say it, but. Not bad, not, not, not bad intentions, just a uh, wrong code, wrong version. Here's a example of making a trusted IP range. The software is really very minimal. But it gives you a lot of options. Anything else guys? Yeah, you could come off mute. Anyone that wants to ask a question. Thank you, Greg. That was great questions. Uh, anyone else? Okay, cool. If you're interested in the presentation, you could uh, drop me a note or, or drop Will a note. Um, I did put a poll in there. I appreciate any feedback you might have in the chat before you leave today. Just give us a rating here. Um, I believe uh, we will be following up with anyone who attended today uh, directly or your account manager will be too. So we know this is a, a critical matter in today's world, right, of networking protecting the network and SIP safety is just one of a SIP security is relatively new. And as you can see, Rockwell is taking the lead on it. So we'd be very interested in talking to you about your specific needs. And as I think Will did a good job showing is that we could actually come out and even start with a security posture survey. If you feel you want to look at your network and, and see uh, how it looks or where you're exposed and what might be the best solution. It's probably the best way to start. And uh, it's a new service that uh, we have available through Rexel and we're, we're willing to do that. So do you have anything else to add, Will? Um, no, that was pretty good. The network assessment and the security posture survey, two different, um, two different animals, but both kind of necessary. To, the network assessment's great if you want to, um, see what you've got on your plant floor, where your network is at, or just take it to the next level and, and uh, provide a design, we can provide a design to move forward with so that um, everybody could be on the same page inside the company. And the security posture survey is uh, really good at finding out what's on the wire. We come in and we uh, hook up a laptop and take packets from uh, five, you know, four or five different sources once we figure out which, where the, where the um, breaking points would be. And, uh, and then we analyze that traffic and, and tell you where there's, uh, where there could be issues, where there are issues or, um, and that's also another way to get um, everybody on the same page in the company. Well, thanks guys. I appreciate everyone okay. coming today. Thanks Will, guys, great job. Thanks, uh, if you guys need anything, reach out and uh, I can send this out to you. Thank you very much. You got it. Take care. Take it easy, guys.